Hello, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to turn your colour images into a digital lithograph. So here we have our original image and what we're going to do is break away from the usual photographic enhancement tools and get creative with some of Photoshop Elements creative filters. So by the time we've finished applying a few layers and effects we'll end up with a portrait that looks something like this. And as you can see, we've reduced the photographic image into this simplified depiction. So basically, we're left with a cutout of the features and the outline, which gives us the lithograph style effect. Then, to give it an extra element of depth, we've added a radial gradient behind and also overlaid a texture, which is just added to the effect of the image. So we'll get straight into it. And if I go back to Portrait Before, and we just want to set the polygonal lasso tool. So if we just left click and hold on the lasso tool in the tool palette and we just go down to the final option which is the polygonal lasso tool and release and I'm just going to zoom into our image slightly by going Control plus or apple plus on a mac just do that a couple of times hold down spacebar and I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the right arm just by the elbow now all I need to do is just click once to set my first point and then very carefully I'm just going to trace all the way around the outline of the portrait. OK, so when you get to the end of the left shoulder, just continue clicking around and you can just move the image around just by holding down spacebar and left clicking. And we just want to bring that end point of the lasso tool all the way back to the start point. Now as you drag the cursor over the start point you'll just see a small little circle appear. Just left click once and that'll complete the selection and you'll get those running ants appearing all the way around the subject. Now going control or apple zero will just make the image fit back into screen so we get a better idea of what's going on. We've made our selection and now we want to paste the selected area into a new layer. So we can do that very quickly and easily just by going Control c to copy and Control v to paste. And as you'll see here, down in the Layers palette, we've just got our cutout of our subject. I haven't done any smoothing or feathering, as when we apply the filters, it will really make very little difference. So now we've got our cutout, we can start to apply our creative filters. So if we go up to our Filters menu, down to Adjustments and down to Threshold. And here we have the Threshold Filter. Now the Threshold Filter is very simple. We've got our Threshold Slider just here at the bottom. Anything to the left of the slider will be black and anything to the right of the slider will be white. So we can see most of our tonal information is over here on the left. So as we slide the slider along we want to position it so we're getting a nice amount of detail in the features but we're kind of just whitening out most of the rest of the portrait. So if I take the threshold level to about 85 and here we can see we've got enough detail there to show us the facial features and we're just pulling out the white of some of the highlights within the image as well. So I'll just click OK to apply that and that'll apply the threshold filter to our photographic image. Now at the moment, if I just quickly zoom in, we see that the image is still quite detailed. And what we want to do is just smooth out all of these black areas just to get it to look a little bit more creative and fluid. So I'll just control zero just to make that full screen again. And this time I'm going to go back to the lasso tool and just select the standard lasso tool. And very quickly, I'm just going to draw around the facial features. So the eyes, eyebrows, mouth and nose. Just release to make my selection and now I just want to smooth down those features. So if I go back up to filter, down to artistic and I want to use palette knife. So just left click on that, that'll open up the filter gallery and I want to set the stroke size of my palette knife to about 8, stroke detail to about 2 and I'm going to leave softness at 0. And as you can see, it's just nicely smoothed out all the features and the detail within the picture. Click OK to apply that. And now I want to do exactly the same for the rest of the image, but I want to apply a greater amount of smoothing. So if I go Control, Shift and I, and that'll just invert the selection, or you can just go to Select and Inverse. So 
Now got the rest of the image selected, go back up to my filter menu, down to artistic and down to palette knife. And this time I'm going to take the stroke size right up to 35, leave stroke detail at two. And we have to wait a few moments for the picture to appear and you really see how that's just smoothing out those details there. So if I'm happy with that, I'll just click OK to apply that to the image. Now that we've created our smooth black outline, we want to select all of the black area so that we can remove any white from the image. That way when we place the background in, we get the background shining through everywhere in the image apart from those areas which are covered with black. So we'll select the magic wand tool on the left, make sure that contiguous is switched off, and then we'll just left click once just to deselect our selection, left click again, and that'll select all the areas in the image which are black. Now if I go over to my layers palette, I'm just going to switch off my layer 1, click the new layer icon or I can go up to layer, new layer. And I now want to fill that with black. So if I go to edit and fill selection, in the contents just make sure that I've got black selected, leave the blending mode at normal and make sure preserve transparency is switched off. Then just click OK and that'll fill in our selection with black. Now I can go Control D just to deselect our selection. I want to click back onto layer one and create a new blank layer ready for our background. Now we're going to use a radial gradient for this. So first thing we need to do is set our foreground and background colors. So to do this, I'm going to click into our foreground color swatch. And down here at the bottom, we have this little hex value and I'm just going to type into there C1 and four zeros and that will give us a nice bright red. Click OK. This time I'm going to click into the background colour swatch and just type in three four and four zeros and click OK. Now I'm going to select the gradient tool, click on the gradient preview just make sure that I've got foreground to background selected and click OK. Now just going to make sure that I've got radial gradient selected. Go down to the portrait and then just click just underneath the nose. And it's going to draw a gradient line just over to the left going diagonally down to about 45 degrees and release the mouse. And there we can see we've just got a nice gradient background. So it's a nice bright red around the face going to this sort of darkest, almost vignette style around the edges. So we're almost finished and the last thing we really need to do is just to apply our textured background. Go up to File, down to Place, select our textured background and hit Place. Just hold down Shift and Alt, grab hold of one of the corner points, just increase the scale until it fits full screen and hit the green tick in the bottom. Now go up to your layer blending modes, hit normal. We just want to choose soft light. And as soon as we do that, we can now see the gradient red coming through the texture background and overlaid by that thick outline. So the final step is just to flatten our image. So if we go over to the layer options, down to flatten image, hit OK, and there we have our final image.